Recording, recording, right. It looks like it's all good. Yeah. I, I took my whole family to see John Wick Chapter 4 at the cinema. Yeah. Uh, and it's the first time that my dad has been to the cinema with us since Dunkirk came out. Not the event in history, but the, <laughs> the film. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Sorry. Shut up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, not, yeah. And, um, because <laughs> uh, they like, they like John Wick films. So we figured this, you know, my mum occasionally comes to cinema with us, but dad is not a cinema person. Yeah. Anyway, the film was suitable for them, but what was not suitable for them was the trailer for Joyride before the film. <laughs> the trailer they showed me last week. Yeah. Um, that came on and I was like, oh, I don't like being sat next to my mum while this trailer's playing because it's quite, in, quite intense. And then when it yeah. finished, my mum just went, who cares? Oh, <laughs> no. And then it moved on. I think it looks like a good film, but it's definitely not, um, no. not for them. Did you die They're not the joy. target audience. <laughs> They're not the, but uh, why would you show the trailer for Joyride during uh, John Wick 4? They don't really match. I thought trailers had no. to match the film that you kind of were watching, no? They sort of try to, but then sometimes it's just like this is a film and the studio is paying to promote it, so put yeah. the trailer on. Like, I've seen, the trailer for, I've seen that trailer for Evil Dead Rise before some non-horror movies recently, and, and there's been some reactions in the cinema, <laughs> a bit like yours. Um that's just, out in a couple of weeks. I'm very excited. Is, is it not out yet? No, it's out in like two weeks, I think. What? <laughs> yeah. But it, it premiered at South by Southwest in America and uh, people loved it. So Okay, cool. Hopefully it'll be good. Well, enjoy it. I, oh, God, I will, I hope. Did your parents, what well, did your family enjoy John Wick for? Um, my mum thought it had too much shooting in it. <laughs> and I it didn't understand because she's seen John Wick's one through three. And John Wick 4 is longer, but the first three still have a, a lot of shooting in them. Yeah. Um, Dad liked it, but thought it was too loud, which... <laughs> it's just too loud. <laughs> yeah. Uh... So well, that was great. Right. Um, shall I start uh, introing the episode? Two friends just made a podcast. Two good friends just made a podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to the best podcast, the universe's favourite podcast ever, Culture Bucket Podcast the podcast and um it's a pleasure to have you with us as always i am your host george and i will be talking about popular culture today with my best friend alex and that's what that's what the podcast is about that's the intro that i do every time <laughs> and it's a pleasure to have you with us this is episode 99 and that's amazing and it's going to be so good but it's a roundup of the of a four-parter we've been doing over the past, uh, I don't know, like month and a half, two months. Yeah. Uh, so if you haven't listened to our previous episodes, this might not be the one to jump in on. Maybe go back to the one called Culture Book of Our Lives Part 1 and listen through those episodes and then come back to this one. If you have listened through those episodes, well done and <laughs> welcome to this one. Uh, we're going to be talking about the homework that we said each other during each of those parts. Uh, so talking in total about eight movies that are important to both of us across the span of our lives. Um, but I can't do it on my own. I'll be doing it with my co-host, whose name is Alex. Hi, Alex. <laughs> Hi, George. Hi, everyone. That intro was <laughs> very deadpan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it would look like you were reading from somewhere. <laughs> that was too good to be written down. That had to just oh, come it off was the top wonderful. Of the head. Best, best um, ever. Yeah, yes. I mean, my setup's very different this week because I'm 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 visiting home, so um, not the cinema in Manchester, but the place <laughs> where I would, I'm not even where I was born because my home has moved. It doesn't matter. I'm visiting where my parents live, so I'm podcasting today from mm. my bedroom there, 
Uh, the setup is very different. It might, might sound, I will sound different, but hope, I think it should still be okay, but I'm recording on different devices to usual and the, the, the whole setup is different. I've got my devices balanced on top of a Lego box. Oh, is that why everything dex, is moving? Desk. Oh yeah, probably because it's it the like Lego box in, is on my bed. It looks like you're in like in a fish tank. <laughs> Good. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, and um, yeah, so it's a very different setup, so it made me feel weird, which is probably why my uh, delivery was a little bit deadpan. But let's go with it. Good. Uh, so yeah, this is the 99th episode. Next time is going to be our huge, spectacular 100th episode, where we're going to be doing a redo of uh, some of our early episodes and checking in on what our top fives are now in the intervening years. And a lot's happened because it was like the start of the COVID pandemic Mm -hmm. when we first did those episodes. And now the pandemic has become part of the wallpaper of society in a different way. And (laughs) we've changed and my list has definitely changed. So it'll be interesting to to talk about that and look at that next time. Uh, However, due to the different recording setups and things, there will be a week's gap between uh, that episode coming. So this episode is going to come out and then you're going to have to wait two weeks for the next episode. I'm very sorry about that, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be so good. In the meantime, while you're waiting for that 100th episode, what you should do is go to all of the places in which podcasts can be rated and reviewed. You can do it in app and give us a rating, five stars, thumbs up, give us a review, please. Thank you. That's what we want from you. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. Please, please, please give us some reviews and ratings. Thank you. Uh, I'm still trying to find my normal podcasting voice. I think it's because I'm like slightly bent out forwards as well because of the chair I'm using. It's making yeah. me sound different. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. That's that's okay. We'll accept it okay. for this time. Good. Thanks. How are you today? I'm wonderful. I went to Napoli this week and it was absolutely incredible. I ate lots of pizza. I ate my body weight in food. Um, and yeah. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm on holiday, uh, hence being in a different environment to usual, but uh, I'm fine with it. And uh, I've been having a lovely time. I played through um, the Resident Evil 4, the Resident Evil 4 remake uh, over the course of this week. Um, which has been a delight to get a week where I don't need to think about much and can just play a great video game. So it nice. coincided well, the release of that game and the uh, the holiday. Uh, that's a great remake. That's a great game. Resident Evil 4, one of the best ever. Oh, oh so good. Um, yeah, been playing a lot of board games. It's been a good week. Good. Uh, before we get into doing our homework, we're going to do... We normally now separate culture catch-ups into... Uh, separate episodes but we're just going to do a very quick one at the top of this one where me and Alex have both got one thing that we want to discuss this is culture catch up time this is where we talk about what we've watched what we've read what we've listened to and probably some other stuff who's going to go first Alex I can go first if you want go on I have watched the first episode of the new Netflix series Beef uh, what? Series? What? What are you talking about? It's a movie. So last week, George showed me a trailer of a film called Beef. And then <laughs> I went to watch it on Netflix. And uh, it's a series. <laughs> um, so it's a series of 10 episodes. Uh, the first one is the longest. It's about 39 minutes. And then the rest are about 30 minutes. Um, starring the wonderful wow. Ali Wong and Stephen Yeun. Um the yep. first episode, um, we pretty much know what happens in the first episode with the trailer. So, you know, Stephen yeah. Yun uh, plays Danny Cho and Ali Wong plays Amy Lau and they meet in a parking lot. Um, and then that stems, you know, uh, this hate between them. And um, it's pretty intense. I, I, um, I was... I don't know if I like it or not. There's so much hate. <laughs> Nobody's very nice in it. Everybody seems... I still don't like anyone. And I think I'm not going to like anyone. And I think that's the point. And I think it's really well made because I was just watching this and I was like, why is everybody so horrible? <laughs> well, there must like, be... Because the thing about that trailer, the reason I thought it was a movie is because it looked like it's... It's pretty high concept in terms of like, yeah. it, it, it's, it seems like a really simple setup that wouldn't yeah. extend past 90 minutes or so. Like two people yeah. get into road rage and escalate a war of violence against each other. 
So yeah. I'm intrigued now that it's a 10 episode season. What is going to happen? Like what character growth are we going to see? Do you really think we'll end up not liking those characters by the end or, or not finding anything to empathize with or, or, or see ourselves in? I have, I have, I, I have no idea. That's the thing. Like I watched this as like, everybody's so horrible and I don't know. Like everybody, like even the people, that, even the extras that you meet in a five minute thing, they're horrible. <laughs> um, but wow. it's, it's, I think it's really well made because I want to know what's going to happen. But while I was watching, it, I was like, why am I watching this? Why is everybody so mean? <laughs> Um, wow. Uh, Steven Yan is great. Ali Wong is amazing. Uh, her, you know, she's a comedian, but her acting is w- w- wonderful in this one because she's kind of playing a part in a way uh, in her life. And I can't say any more. Um, and that's okay. the other thing. I think there's so much about these characters that from the beginning when they meet and in the 40 minutes of the episode, it kind of unravels more about these characters and what they have done and where they come from and why <laughs> is this horribleness around them? And um, mm. yeah. And I, th- I, th- I think maybe by the end we might like them by the or Maybe they'll episode. grow and change. Who knows? Yeah. But I think, you know, it's, uh, <sighs> Yeah, it might be like a bit like the White Lotus. <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, in the sense like you don't really like anyone in the White Lotus, but you love the season, the series, you know. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. I'm gonna watch the second episode and see how it goes. I'll probably watch it all, but it's um, interesting. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I want to give it a go. I should have watched it really, but I kind of forgot about it because it only came out. I think it, we were recording maybe a day after it came out. Uh, it came out oh. uh, today's the eighth. About t- two days ago, it came out the sixth of April. Two days ago, and I was really excited. I was waiting um, for the sixth of April. So, yeah. I was like, I'm gonna watch it, and then I went to watch it because like, it's a series. <laughs> like, episode yeah. one, I really thought it was a, a movie. That trailer yeah. really, really sells it as a film. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah. Sure, a series. But it is, is fine. quite exciting that um, it's a series because I think there's so much more that you can put in the in the show and in these characters. Yeah, there must. Yeah, you'd, you'd hope there's a reason that they've decided it's, it merits a ten episode um, yeah. season of television. Because for what so, I can yeah. see, like there's probably a lot behind them and why they are like this. Um, right. But, um, and if there isn't, I don't want to waste my time with something that is so mean. <laughs> Yeah, I know, because I've, I've been watching a lot of... Well, I watched Shrinking, and yeah. I watched... I've been watching... I've been catching up on Ted Lasso, and that, that is two shows that are just about people being nice to each other and supporting yeah. each other and being kind. Yeah, not and, this uh, one. Beef sounds like the exact opposite of that, so not... maybe it'll be a good palate cleanser after Ted Lasso. Yeah, yeah. To drag me back down into the dirt. Yeah. Like, if I can... T- if I, if, please believe me, every character... Maybe a puff... The, the kid, maybe. There's one kid that does not... He, she's nice, but... <laughs> I okay. think everybody else is just hor- horrendous. Interesting. All right. Yeah. Well, I will watch it. Um, I went to see this week the Super Mario Brothers movie. Ah, you were so excited about it. I was. I was nervous about it because we talked about Chris Pratt voice, etc. Yeah. Um, but then the, every trailer that came out, I got a little bit more excited for it because it was just looking like a very faithful uh look at the mushroom kingdom that we all know and love from the <laughs> yeah. super mario games uh but then before the film came out the reviews started to hit and oh no uh the reviewers did not like it, it i think currently it's sitting at 58% on rotten tomatoes or 56% wow. or something which uh still puts it in the rotten category so it has a big green splat icon next to its name <laughs> Um, but the audience score is something like 96 or 97%. Okay. Um, so critics and audiences pretty split on the Super Mario Brothers movie. So that kind of dampened my expectations, dampened my expectations quite a bit for it. But I still went along first, you know, get to an opening day um, to see a 90 minute long children's movie in a cinema full of children. Mm. And um, <laughs> of course, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's the tale of two brothers. You got Mario, he's red with his hat. He wears dungarees and a red shirt and he's short and he has a moustache. And he got his brother Luigi. He's a bit taller. He wears a green hat and green shirt, but overalls again. And they live in Brooklyn in New York and they've started their own, um, their own plumbing business 
They're plumbers, as we all know and love Mario to be. Um, very quickly, they try to save New York City from a big plumbing problem and instead find themselves sucked into a big green pipe, as is the want of Mario. And during their journey, Luigi gets uh, not sucked off. Luigi gets sent off to uh, the Dark Lands, they call it, or something, the kingdom of Bowser, and gets captured by Bowser. Mario mm. ends up in the Mushroom Kingdom, where a little mushroom man called Toad introduces him to Princess Peach, uh, voiced by, well, Mario voiced by Chris Pratt, Luigi voiced by Charlie Day from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Bowser voiced by Jack Black, mm. and uh, Princess Peach voiced by Anya Taylor-Joy. And, and Donkey Kong is actually a big character in this as well, voiced by Seth Rogen just using his normal voice, which is uh, an interesting choice. Um, and uh, basically Mario has to set off on a journey to find Bowser and rescue Luigi from him and uh, protect Peach, although Peach in this movie can protect herself very much as well. And Peach oh, actually trains cool. Mario to be Mario, shows him how to eat the mushroom to get bigger, et cetera, et cetera. Oh. Um, yeah, and then they get home. It's a pretty basic, simple story. Mm. And... That's reflected in the Mario games, which are pretty much to a fault about Mario rescuing Peach from Bowser. Yeah. That's the story that we get in pretty much every Mario game, at least the first 20. Mm. <laughs> um, and yet the critics that have reviewed the film have really taken umbrage with the narrative simplicity of this 90 minute long children's film. Um, I've seen endless comparisons to the Lego movie because, of course, the Lego movie is meta and self-referential and mm. um, laughs at itself and its own absurdity of existing, etc. And a lot of critics are annoyed that the Mario movie it, it trades purely in sincerity and doesn't isn't meta in any way. It doesn't, ref- it doesn't reference itself. It doesn't mm. reference the fact that it's based on a video game, really. It does in some of the animation, but it doesn't in, in terms of the story or the plot or the jokes. And a lot of people have sort of gone, this isn't what we want. We want... We want Lego movie stuff. We want jokes about the fact that it is a video game and we want it to be referential okay. and meta. No. That's one of the if, Super Mario, one of the defining characteristic qualities of Super Mario is its sincerity and it's mm. about fun. It's not about narrative, which makes it a tough sell for a film for some people, and I understand that and that's fair. But it shouldn't then, to, to compensate for that, it shouldn't then pivot to self-referential, sarcastic humour in the way that some people seem to want. Mm like Peter Bradshaw of The Guardian, for example. Ugh. Um, <laughs> it, uh, it should do what the Mario games do and just focus on being a fun, exciting, mm. colourful, interesting time. And it does exactly that. It is that it, every frame is filled with colour and, and wonder and imagination from start to finish, in my opinion. Um, it's got loads and loads of Easter eggs and references to all sorts of things from the old games. When they go down to the sewers, there's a little sign on the wall saying level one, two, which is the name of the sewer level in the original <laughs> Mario Brothers game. Uh, and then when you see, when you see the sign that says one, two, it goes, which is the music from oh. the, that level. And it just, it does everything that you want it to do in terms of being a fan of Mario. And I absolutely yeah. loved it from start to finish. The music, the score is gorgeous. It's full of, um, little moments and nods to Mario games, but remixed in sort of a new way to create a film score. And um, all of the performances are actually... Charlie Day is... Charlie Day is great as Luigi, just doing his Charlie Day voice, but it works. Chris Pratt is just doing his Chris Pratt voice for Mario. And, you know, they make a little joke at the start about how he's not going, it's a me, a Mario, do 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 And that's kind of fine. You settle into it and I don't mind it too much. You know, I'm not not a fan of Chris Pratt, but he's absolutely fine as Mario. Jack Black puts a lot of energy and effort into Bowser and and it works really well. Um, And Anya Taylor-Joy, again, tries really hard as Princess Peach and does a good job and it's fun. And I like Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. Uh, There's a whole (laughs) amazing extended Mario Kart sequence. They didn't need to have Mario Kart in this, but they do. And then when they're choosing their carts, it looks like they're interfacing the Mario Kart game. It's great. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Um, I can't wait to see it again. And um, yeah, it's a pity that it hasn't sort of gone down well critically because it's, it, you know, you want everyone to enjoy it and it's something that's important to you Yeah. and you want it to be celebrated. But it seems like for whatever reason, people have just decided that it's a pile on. So yeah, but I recommend people have an open mind. Don't you feel like now critics, if it's something like 
uh, animation or a remake of a game or a cartoon or Marvel now is not like the pylon seems to be like the uber like super critic about the films rather than just yeah. look, watch them as they are and we've talked about it before just i feel like just watch is a mario movie it's not you know it's not a can film festival movie just watch it as it yeah. is and just enjoy it and 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 rate it for what it is like <laughs> that's it yeah. But I feel like they they look at films in the same way. At, all, all the films they like look at them with the same eye, which is ridiculous because yeah, you know yeah. And as well as the Lego Movie, the other main comparison I keep seeing in reviews is the original Mario film from the nineties. People keep oh. being like, "This is actually the second Mario film." The Bob Hoskins one came out, and uh, and I've oh. seen people be like, "Actually, that one's better." No, it's not. Shut up. It's oh my terrible. god, no, that's it's a just terrible stupid. film. That's just silly. It's entertaining in a bad way in some ways. <laughs> but like I think M- I think Empire Magazine's review said that the the Bob Hoskins one has more imagination than um than the new one. No. Just because the new one is using using the world of the video game doesn't make it less imaginative. Just you know or just because the original one yeah. fought up and, and I guess you could I guess being more imaginative doesn't mean it's better because yeah, they fought up new things for that Bob Hoskins movie and they were all terrible and weird and made you feel uncomfortable. And bad, bad film. Watchable in to watch like something a, a weird train wreck, but not a good Mario film. Like stop, mm. stop going on about that film. Stop going on about the Bob Hoskins movie as if it's oh we're gonna re- we're gonna reevaluate it. It's actually good. No, it's not. <laughs> it's it's awful. It's so yeah. bad. Yeah. So yeah, go, I don't know. I have an open mind. It's a children's movie. Watch it as a children's movie. Maybe you'll enjoy it. Okay. Shall we get into the main chunk of our episode? Our homework. Homework. The episode Big on homework. homework. Time. Sit down at the back and be quiet and get out your book because it's time to discuss your homework. Now. We've watched four films apiece. Yeah. Ranging, spanning the years 1993 through to mm-hmm. 2019. Some of the most important yes. years that we've been alive. Yeah. Um, let's start with... Nora Ephron's 1993 rom-com classic starring Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, Heat. No, sorry, Sleepless in Seattle. (laughs) Sleepless in Seattle. Uh, By the way, after that episode, I'm such a... Because I love Jurassic Park and it should have been Jurassic Park, but then because you had it, I wanted to like give something else. But this is like a number two because I was thinking, why? Sleepless in Seattle, I love that film, but you know, Jurassic Park is definitely better. That's but fair. If, I, if not, I you would have not agree. watched anything. So, yeah. True. Tell me what you and think about... I watched Sleepless in Seattle. Sleepless in Seattle. Sleepless in Seattle. So, I think I've seen one of a Nora Ephron movie, uh, which is When Harry Met Sally. Mm. Which, you've seen that, right? Yeah. What do you think of When Harry Met Sally? Um, I prefer Sleepless in Seattle because I think Harry Met Sally was just a little bit to when I watched it, I think I was younger. And uh, I think I was just, I just, it was just a little bit, I'm not very good with Billy Crystal and his way of acting. And it's just a bit like, meh, 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 meh. And, um, <laughs> and so I, wow. well, it's true, isn't it? No, it's He's just fine, like, very no like, huh. it feels more like a, an old school, uh, old co- uh, actor, old Hollywood actor. Um, mm. So I, I, it, I, I know probably people say it's better, but I personally prefer uh, Sleepers in Seattle because it was just a bit okay. less chaotic than. Uh, Fair enough. Um, well, I liked. Harry. I liked. I went Harry Met Sally. Mm. I don't, it's not one of my favorite movies of all time in him, but I remember enjoying it. Um, and then was excited to see Sleepers in Seattle. Um, I I did not like this movie at all. <laughs> yeah, I saw your review and I was like, oh. I'm ready I'm for sorry. this. <laughs> I was like, oh. Um, I don't get it. It's creepy. It's a weird, creepy movie. Why is it creepy? Why is it creepy? Tell, no, tell me why. I, I, I genuinely okay, so ask you a question. Why is it creepy? So the movie follows um, Meg Ryan, who yeah. is... Uh, see, because of my setup, it's a little bit difficult for me to look up movies. Like, what's her character called? Sally. <laughs> And Harry, right? Yeah. Tom Hanks is Harry and she's Sally. Yeah. Uh, I think of a different movie. 
Uh, here we go. So, yeah, it's all right. Meg Ryan is Annie. Tom Hanks is Sam, right? So Annie and Sam, Sam and Annie. Um, Meg, Annie is engaged to Walter, played by Bill Pullman, who seems like a perfectly nice guy. Yeah. She takes him home to see her family and her family are kind of mad, but it's fine, et cetera, et cetera. She's driving home this long journey. She's on her own in a car. She's listening to the radio and she's listening to like a Fraser style. I'm a talk show host Mm -hmm. who's a psychologist and people are going to ring in with their problems and I'm going to discuss them. And this little boy rings in. Uh, total betrayal of trust on this part of this little boy <laughs> and tells the talk, the radio host that his dad needs a new wife because his, his mum died. And the film actually opens with the, with the uh, funeral of Tom Hanks, wife, uh, who is dead. So I don't know what her name is. Dead wife. And, um, <laughs> because of dead wife, Jonah, Sam's son thinks that Sam needs to find a new wife and so he can have a new mum. And the talk show host, again, totally unethical, forces Jonah to put his dad on the phone so that his dad, without warning, can can discuss his deep personal trauma uh, on national radio um, across the thing. And then Meg Ryan, Annie, hears this and based only on this interview hmm. she falls in love with him yeah mm-hmm. and then she goes mad <laughs> she she like writes him a letter and various other things and she she goes to where he lives which is not where she lives they live on other cars of the country she goes to Seattle where he lives and stalks him and follows him around and then stands in the middle of the road and stares at him and almost gets run over because she's she's in this psychotic trance where she's all that matters is staring at him. Yeah. And she runs away and then his son writes her a letter and sort of engineers this situation for them to both meet at the top of the Empire State Building. And then they both, for the first time, the two main characters in this romantic comedy meet... And then the movie ends. What's wrong with that? Sounds wonderful. What's wrong with that? What's... It's, <laughs> no, it's... What? <laughs> she stalks him. She stalks him. She she follows him from afar. Be- she leaves her <laughs> seemingly perfectly nice fiancé, who's done nothing wrong. Maybe he has. Other you don't than know. maybe be slight... Well, no, I'll, yeah, all I know is the movie. Like, that's that's absurd. Like, the movie presents him as a character who's done nothing wrong, he's absolutely fine, maybe slightly dull. She leaves him for a man she's never met and has heard on the radio for about 90 seconds. We're supposed to believe because of the power of true love or something, but in reality, because she's <laughs> insane and she's mentally the power problematic. Of- love come on no because there's no love he come doesn't on. know her he doesn't know her from yeah, any but he from will anyone. fall in once he meets her he'll fall in love with how her. do we know that she's insane exactly. she'll probably hear she'll probably fall he'll fall in love with her and then she'll hear someone else on the radio and go and find so, chase them down oh my god you're so bitter man i'm not i'm not bitter you're it's so not there's like, no it's so a romantic like, comedy Romantic comedies are built on the chemistry and relationship between the two leads, and they don't meet in the movie. It's different. It's different. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, there's a reason that they haven't. There's a reason that Sleepless in Seattle in 1993 didn't then inspire a whole like decade of other similar movies where the, where the leads don't meet until the end because it doesn't make any sense. But maybe it's about you know falling in love with somebody that you haven't met yet and maybe it's about how can the, you like, do the, what are you talking your about you're a half and then mean? you'll find your whole and just their voice makes you i don't know <laughs> <laughs> you mean? it's about falling in love with someone you haven't met that is literally the definition of stalking <laughs> not in 1993 george that's the definition of love in 1993 no, that was still the definition of stalking in 1993. Um, yeah, I, I'm glad you watched it. It's, but I think, I think Jurassic Park is much better. <laughs> Look, it's totally fine that you like it. I can... I, 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 no, I, I don't understand why, though, because it's not funny and it's not 
romantic because there's no there's no opportunity for romance. Yeah, but that's the it's kind of romance I Tom like. Hanks, no but Tom Hanks is romance. moping around. Tom Hanks is moping around for the entire movie. There's a weird streak of like misogyny running through it, of like jokes about women and stuff. That I get, I get maybe 1993. I don't know, but like I didn't find it funny, yeah. and I thought it was really weird and mopey on the Tom Hanks end, and then just really weird and uncomfortable on the Meg Ryan end, and then they, and then it, they it meet, it ends, and they meet, and it ends. I agree. No, you don't, because you <laughs> like it. And it's fine. I like um, lots of I- movies that are probably. Uh, that uh, lots of other people don't like. And this is considered a classic. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I watched it. I loved it. I, you know, I haven't watched it in a while. Maybe I should watch it again and I'll be as hypercritical as you. Or you could just watch it as go and go, well, you know, it's weird, but they love each other. Woo-hoo. I did take some notes during my watching of the movie, which I oh don't usually God. do. See, see, that's why you didn't enjoy it. You didn't even pay attention to it. You're just there on your, like, pen and paper trying to, like... Burr, burr, burr. I wrote six sentences. It's not like I... Do you want to hear my six sentences? Yes. Okay, first I wrote, men are like this and women are like this because there's a lot of that joke in this movie. Mm, of like, that was 1993. Oh, are... Remember, it's 1993. Men like beer and women like wine. Mm. I remember in 2023, it's still like that. <laughs> well, excuse my language here because also lots of use of the word hoe. We're talking about hoes a lot in this film. <laughs> I don't... don't like that very much. Um, uh, and I, and I just wrote, these two characters haven't met and we are one hour and 20 minutes into the film. I didn't realize that we'd get all the way through the movie before they met, but there we go. Then I've written why this obsession with being killed by a terrorist. People talk about terrorists a lot in this movie from 1993. Um, they talk a lot about, you're more likely, I can't remember what the comparison is, but people keep bringing up the statistics of being like, you're more likely to to meet someone that actually loves you than to be killed by a terrorist or something. Or you're more likely to be killed by a terrorist than fall in love or or something. I feel like you wouldn't write that joke 10 years later. No. It's weird. (laughs) It's it's very weird. Um, And then I just wrote Tom Hanks is perpetually in a bad mood in this film. Because he is. And I love Tom Hanks. I like Tom Hanks to be a happy guy. Exactly. No, it's not. No. I'm sorry. Um, that's fine. But that's Sleepless in Seattle. Do, would you like to defend it? Why do you like it? I don't know. I guess I guess it would... I guess I've got fond memories of it and I watched it at a different time that is not now. Like I said, I haven't watched it in a while. And if maybe if I watched it now, I would feel the same as you. But I'm going to keep it there in the nice box that I have in my nice that's um, fine it was when Meg Ryan was still you know popular and I loved her and you know and uh, I loved Meg Ryan movies I watched them all <laughs> and I like Tom Hanks and I don't know it's got like it gives me like a fuzzy warm feeling thinking about it yeah that's fair I mean the, the thing about Meg Ryan is she doesn't really make movies anymore no um and she's amazing. Like, I get, like, she's an incredible performer. She's yeah. very charismatic. You want to like her. She's the only person, really, that could have made this movie come even close to working. You, you cast almost any other actress in that role, and they truly are going to look like they're insane. But <laughs> yeah. Meg Ryan is so charismatic, mm. so likeable, so enjoyable to watch, that she she comes as close as anyone could to making that work, in my opinion. But it's still just... <laughs> <laughs> But she is she is amazing. She's an amazing talent, She's and so it's a pity good. that um, you know her career panned out the way it ended up panning out. Exactly. But, um, like I even watched and maybe a little bit enjoyed. You've got mail with Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. You know. I bet that's a better movie. Do they meet in the movie? Do they have scenes together in the movie? No, not until the. I don't think until the end. I think this is until the what end as well you, because why I are think we, that, what are we doing? <laughs> because. <laughs> I think I think they don't beat until like quite I th- because I think they send each other emails. I haven't seen it in a long time as well, um, but I think because they like send each other emails. Were they not allowed to meet? Did they hate each other? Were they not allowed to be on set at the same time or something? Why would you make these films I know, I think, where two the- very very charismatic people don't ever? Oh meet? no 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 no! Completely wrong. They have met each other and they don't like each other. However, they've been writing to each other and they like each other through email. That's the that's the, oh, the thing. I get it. Yeah, sorry, it took okay. me a little bit of time to get back to. Yeah, so so they kind of <laughs> know each other. Movie. <laughs> 
but they they only love each other through email and when they find out at the end that they're like uh their pen like email pals then they're like oh my god but maybe this hatred was actually love you know Right, right off the bat, you describing that to me and me thinking about what that movie might be like in my head was a more enjoyable time than the film <laughs> Sleepless in Seattle to me. I, it, it might be better. I don't know. Check it out. I might watch, watch it. Tell me. It sounds, yeah, watch it, it. sounds good. Yeah, watch it. <sighs> I think okay. it's funnier than Sleepless in Seattle. So are many things. <laughs> Okay, um, let's talk about my 1995, I think. Was it 1995? Yep. Yeah, 1995 film. Uh, two hours and 50 minute film. <laughs> Heat. <laughs> and I was underlined two hours and 50 minutes. It is quite long. It is. <laughs> That's John Wick long. And it's not yeah, John Wick. Yeah, that is as long as John Wick Chapter 4. Wow. <coughs> uh starring like a like a wonderful cast we have al pacino robert de niro val kilmer john voigt john sizemore which unfortunately Tom passed sizemore. away last sizemore which unfortunately yeah. passed away last month and then yeah, sad. yeah and then um uh, we have the women, Diane Venora, Amy Brenneman, and Ashley Judd. Ashley Judd. Come and don't forget us. Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman as um, Al Pacino's stepdaughter. Okay, how this film. So it's a group of um, uh, high professional, like professional thieves uh, led by the very intelligent and incredible... Um, uh, Neil Macaulay, played by Robert mm-hmm. De Niro, and De Niro. um, and they do a heist, and uh, in this heist, this heist is very, 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 this heist with a truck, and they have to get bonds or whatever. It's very, very incredible, and um, but unfortunately, the detective that takes the heist is Lieutenant Vincent Hanna played by Al Pacino. So if, if if Al Pacino is the guy that's chasing you, you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna make it, are you? Just from the start. No, he's like a dog um, with a bone, this guy. He doesn't let go. Yeah, yeah. Um and so basically it's two hours and fifty minutes of Al Pacino chasing um Robert De Niro. Lots of stuff happening and um people shooting and um yeah. Uh yeah, is that is that the story pretty much? Yeah. Uh you've you've sort of you've you've broadly nailed it, yeah. Obviously there's more going yeah. on because it's, it's like a cat, so long. It's like a cat yeah, and mouse that's, thing. That's the, in, it's, it's a, a cat, cat and mouse thing. Robert yeah. De Niro Robert De Niro still wants to like do his thing and he's the lovable kind of um criminal and Al Pacino is the kind of the 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 cat trying to like chase him and you know they're both very cool and they kind of become a they respect each other very respectful very respectful I mean um, I feel like Robert De Niro is very cool I feel like Al Pacino is like okay one just a second one step so away from some just losing his mind in this movie I've got some notes okay go on. <laughs> I've got right. a book of notes um, right. okay <laughs> so first of all when did we decide that Al Pacino was a good actor <laughs> when did he stop being a good actor? Because in this in this film, he's totally unhinged. He is crazy. But it's great. <laughs> it's, it's so entertaining. It's insane. There's a scene. Can I show you? Can I show you the scene? That I was like, this is too much. Can I do a little bit? My is it like the one little... where he? You absolutely yeah. can. Is it? Was it where he interrogates uh, Hank Azaria? Yes. Yes. <laughs> And I was just like, that's why George likes this film, because Al Pacino is totally unhinged. I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I've got it ready here. Okay, okay let's so go. um so Hank Azaria is having a uh relationship uh with Val Kimmer's wife, Ashley Judd, and so they have to find I don't know, they have to go and interview him. And um this is the scene where Al Pacino goes absolutely. Wait before insane. you before you play the video. Yeah. Before you play the video. Yeah. You got to tell you got to tell everyone what the video is called. 
So the video is called Heat 1995 Cause She's Got a Great Ass. You, and God. this is where he went. He goes and try and find out something how he can get the character of Val Kilmer through Val Kilmer's wife, uh, wife's lover, Hank Azaria. So let's go. Okay. Yeah, and it just it just with a little thing, it's like it just like gets his finger, and. <laughs> This is Las Vegas. You don't even have jurisdiction here. <laughs> this little man just manhandling Hank Azaria. It's like, I what? Here, okay? Las Vegas PD. <laughs> <laughs> He's unhinged. You are extradited to Newark on a New Jersey warrant for smuggling... On a New Jersey warrant. Carolina three years ago. He's just rolling his <laughs> head all over the place, staring. <laughs> that is it. Oh, shit. It's like he's made of cocaine. Yeah. Who? who? Uh, this is a, who? Who? Maybe you've been talking dirty to on telephone every day last night. All right, you know what? You can't tell me that. Well, who needs to? This is on a plane back to New Jersey, Jagoff. Jagoff! This kind of language is insane. Great ass! And you can get all the way up. Ferocious, aren't I? I think of asses. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just gonna stop it now. So God, yeah, he, he just oh, goes because so she's got a this great ass, and you're right up in it. It's like, oh my god, and it's just like, what? Sorry. And it's just so unhinged the entire time, and I couldn't take him seriously because everything he does, he's insane. And then I was reading the trivia, and you're saying, oh, you know, in a in a previous. <clears throat> a draft uh the detective the lieutenant uh was a cokehead it's like yeah but he's not a cokehead so don't act like he's a cokehead <laughs> no now it's uh, just this subtext oh my goodness but it's he is insane um and um <clears throat> so yeah i i that was too much for me it's just a very long film um, what amazing yeah, is also was the age gap. I know it was 1995, but this is Hollywood. The age gap between the male actors and their female counterpart lovers, you know? So oh, yeah, <clears throat> um, yeah. Robert De Niro is 21 years older that, than Amy yeah. Bren- Brenneman, who is her, his, his love interest. And you go, yeah. uh, you can see it. <laughs> You're an old man. <laughs> And then Al Pacino is 12 years older than uh, Diane Ver- uh, Ven- Venora, I think, who is this kind of, yeah. I thought I thought she was his lover, but uh, Venora, Diane Venora. And I thought she was his lover, but they're actually married and they have like a, a child, uh, well, a, a stepchild, uh, which was Natalie Portman. Mm. And Val Kilmer is 11 years older than Ashley Judd. It's just like, what, guys? Oh, I didn't realise that. Yeah, so that that was really freak, creep. I was just that was creeping me out, especially uh, Robert De Niro and uh, Amy Brenneman. I was like, she's young. Um, Robert yeah, De Niro's those scenes are definitely some of the shakiest. Yeah, when they go, oh. um, Robert De Niro is wonderful in this film. You kind of like him, and you know he does his thing. Um, um, what I didn't what. I, I, it's not my film. I appreciate why you like it, and you know it's 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 good. But I was just by the end, I was just so like, oh, I've had enough, please. But I did not, <laughs> I did not like the ending because it was classic Hollywood ending. Where why did can I spoil it? Yeah, we spoil it. Yeah, yeah. We're, why we're why so. did like I think it could have finished when he walks out of the hospital and Al Pacino goes, okay, he's gone gone out. But because it's an American film, the good guys have to win. And so Al Pacino shoots Robert De Niro. And I'm like, why? I don't want that. I want Robert De Niro to just walk off and carry on being a criminal and Al Pacino's carry on being his unhinged self and go and find something else. And... and Because he broke his rule. <clears throat> What? He walked away. He didn't break his rule. He walked away. Which rule? 
<laughs> he walked away too late, though. He stuck around too long. He should have walked away earlier. His rule is to walk away, but he 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 stayed for too long. I think. I think I think it could have because then then after he walks off with the 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 hospital walks out of the hospital, there's another fifteen minutes of like bah, 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 of these two old men chasing each other. <laughs> Oh, but I love the way that scene is so beautiful. I, I I don't know. I love the way that scene is shot on that airport sort of yeah. wasteland. Yeah. And they're hiding behind those metal sort of cooling vents and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it is a very like, it's it's a real sort of crime epic type of film. You have to be in yeah. for one of those if you're going to enjoy it. Yeah. I think I probably would have to watch it. I watched it by myself and I think it was just like, oh, come on, Al Pacino, calm down. And I, th- I think we didn't need a Natalie Portman um, storyline. I don't know why that was there. Just to show that he's a nice guy, but he doesn't, he doesn't feel very paternal. So I'm not sure why the Natalie Portman st- storyline was there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know because it's Michael Mann who made it and he came yeah. off of TV. He did like uh, Miami Vice in the 80s. Yeah. And... In fact, this was originally. There's a very. There's another movie. Uh, it, Michael Mann made a TV movie. I can't remember the name of it. That is just Heat, but without any famous actors in it. Um, okay. And it plays out over like two evenings of TV, and then he remade it as Heat. So I think some of that stuff is is kind of holdover bits from when it was sort of a TV mm. project, uh, similar yeah. to another movie we're going to be talking about next, actually. Um, and and it sort of ended up. Kind of, if that movie had been intended as a Hollywood movie from the very start, it probably wouldn't have had some of that baggage in it, yeah. which for you would probably make it better. But I kind of like that it's this big, weird, baggy thing with this mad Al Pacino performance in, in, in the middle of it. But it's not for everyone. Yeah. So, listeners, go and see that <laughs> that YouTube video or watch Heat, you know, you might enjoy it. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It was fine. It was well, fine. Well, you enjoyed Robert De Niro's performance, right? I I don't know. Like, is that is that acting or is it just being unhinged? No, Robert De Niro's but, performance. Ah, Robert De Niro's performance. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, the thing is, when the scene apparently the scene where he he goes, uh, because she's got a great ass. Apparently, it was he wasn't supposed to do it that way, and so everybody was genuinely shocked. <laughs> <laughs> just insane oh al pacino um but yeah that's a uh, heat 1995 next next is mulholland drive from 2001 another of your uh homeworks um yes next is mulholland mulholland drive 2001 uh, film yes. by david lynch <clears throat> and i didn't realize it was you know, the acting debut of Naomi Watts. Do you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I did know that, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, she also, loves David Lynch. She's... Uh... Yeah. And also uh, starring Laura Herring. I think she was kind of new to the to the game. Um, Justin Theroux, you know, in a moment I didn't realise it was until I went to see the cast. <laughs> and of course... Uh, Billy Ray Cyrus, very important role in this film. Yes, um, can't, can't forget about Billy Ray. We could not forget um, uh, Billy Ray. What to say about this film? Um, well, you got to tell tell us the plot like you did with Heat. Okay, so um, there's a <laughs> um, uh, um, after a uh, an, a car accident. Um, this woman, uh, played by um, Laura Herring, uh, become, uh, has amnesia and uh, she finds herself in this apartment where she meets uh, Betty, played by Naomi Watts, who is an inspiring mm-hmm. um, Hollywood star. And she is very perky from the start. Very like the beginning is just like she's so over the top. And um, Betty helps, uh, wants to try and help uh, Rita 
to find out who she is and uh, where she's come from because she's got amnesia and um, that uh, starts an, uh, an interesting story where maybe what's happening is real or not real. Is that is that the plot of the film? <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's the setup of the film. That's the setup sure. of the film. That's the setup of the film. Um, mm. It's about I can say that it's about the film and the Hollywood industry, the the film industry, the greed, the money around the film industry. Um, it's about love mm-hmm. and lust and uh, good acting, uh, weirdness, <laughs> as uh, David Lynch does. And um, mm-hmm. I, th- I think, I think, I enjoyed it. Like by the end, wow. when, I, when at the end, I was like, "What?" <laughs> I was so confused at the end. <laughs> I was so confused at the end. But I think after getting used to him, you making me watch Twin Peaks, and you know me realizing a little bit more what he's all about. When Naomi Watts comes yeah. out of the of the airport. And she's so over the top and everybody's over the top. It's like, yeah. okay, this is what you yeah. have to have. Nothing has to make <laughs> sense. It has to be just over the top stuff and just go with the ride. And I think with David Lynch, you have to go for the ride and not expect to understand everything or not expect to make sense of what it is. So, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we find out that Rita. And maybe Betty might be the same person in a different reality. Like, might be, like, opposite people or in a different reality. And Yeah, we, or to we, talk spoilers for a minute, it could also be that they, they're both the dying vision of one of them? Rita. No, Betty. Yeah. Naomi Watts' character. Yeah, yeah, Betty. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, and, uh, you know, there's some funny moments where there, there are Hollywood meetings and this guy keeps repeating, she's the act, what, what does he say constantly? She's the actress that you want or something. This is, this is the girl. Ah, this is the girl. And this is the the, girl. (laughs) This is the girl. And then he gets a cup of coffee. Drinks an espresso. He drinks an espresso and just spats it out. And again, that scene, I was like, this is why George likes this film. Like sometimes when I watch weird films, I I can pinpoint why (laughs) you liked it. Because when he just has this shot of (laughs) espresso and then he just spits it out, but not just spit it, he just like dribbles it out. Yeah. That guy, that actor who, the the guy that played that role is uh, Angelo Badalamenti who okay. did the soundtrack score for uh, Twin Peaks and a lot of David Lynch's work. And he also, he passed away last year, I think. Mm. Um, he was amazing. Like some of the work he did with David Lynch is incredible. Some of the best uh, film scores and TV yeah. scores of all time. The film score is great. The it's uh, it, There's a lot to interpret and he doesn't tell you anything, David Lynch. So you can, like I've read a few things that it might've been a dream sequence. So it might've been just, mm-hmm. um, you know, drug fuel thing, anything. There's another point where I was like, this is why George likes it is when they're, they're in a <laughs> diner called Winkies. And then this guy goes on and on about oh, the yeah. story about this blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, <laughs> and then you completely forget about this ghost story that this guy says and then at the end they <laughs> is it towards the end that no it's in the same the, scene isn't it it's not in the same scene no it is and it, it, the, there's one bit that when they go around the corner and they see the ghost that's a bit later yeah 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 because it was might be like, a bit later but it's not at the yeah. end yeah did it make like, you what? jump i just i did <laughs> i did jump <laughs> um uh, yeah. At the end of the film, it does go back to behind the diner, and you see the you see him with the box, don't you? The the man yeah. behind Winkies, you see him with that blue yeah. box uh, that they sort of fall into. Yeah, but yeah, it's earlier in the movie where the jump scare happens. Yeah, but what I did not realize watching the movie and then reading after, but I realized reading after was um, the character of Betty. Uh, she killed Rita, or she wanted to Some- kill Rita. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. 
So I'm I'm getting I'm getting the the uh, I'm I'm getting used to David Lynch's style, and so I'm I I I actually thought that this was okay, like good. I just I was just by the end, I was like, what? Why? Why I don't understand? <laughs> Why? But hey, that's that's progress. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm really pleased about that. I want to ask you about the scene where, um, because especially I think the way that Naomi Watts is really over the top and ridiculous yeah. at the start yeah. makes that audition scene work all the more. What did you think yeah. of the scene where she auditions? So when she auditions, I thought that was incredible. It was so amazing, like incredible acting. Like she's in audition trying to get a role that she can't get because it's kind of for some, is it for somebody else? Is that for the... Well, this, this is the girl. And, yeah. um, but I thought she was amazing in that scene, like incredible, so intense. And because she's like yeah. so over the top and you kind of like felt like she couldn't act at the beginning. But I know the good thing is I know Naomi Watts can act. Can you imagine if you watched Naomi Watts for the first time watching Mulan and Drive and going, this girl cannot act. But then knowing, <laughs> <laughs> knowing Naomi But then Watts, she floors you with yeah, that exactly. one scene. It would just, yeah, because oh. that scene is just like insane. And then she has to kiss that old dude and is like, oh, don't kiss him. <laughs> don't kiss him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, she's amazing. She's amazing in it. Well, again, that, that that kiss might be David Lynch sort of commenting on what you were talking about with Heat a minute ago about the yeah. ridiculous age gaps between yeah. these actors in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's the other thing. It's just like when when Robert De Niro and Amy Brenneman got together, I thought, I felt super weird. I was like, what? It didn't make any sense. They, she saw him at the, at the, at the library... And then she just sat next to him and she, he was super rude to her. And suddenly they're in bed together. Whilst Betty and Rita, they form this really lovely friendship that then ends up to be like intimate. It's just so beautiful to watch. It made mm. total sense. And then when she kisses the old dude, it's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, she, he's, he's, uh, he's good. He's, uh, I'm, I'm getting used to his stuff and I'll need to watch some more. Yeah, I'd recommend um, Blue Velvet next. <sighs> okay. <laughs> not that you have to. I'm not, it's not homework only. I'm just saying yeah. that's probably a good one to go to next because it's another mm. one that's a bit weird, but it, it's it's, yeah. it's actually easier to follow. It's got more of a story that you can follow than Mulholland Drive. Yeah. It's very good. Um, and a Thank very you. mad performance from Dennis Hopper. Uh, Who is not mad? Okay. Who is not mad? <laughs> What ma- who's not no having got a mad like. performance? Like Justin through he's unhinged <clears> here, <throat> and Billy Ray Cyrus is just Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, it's great. And I love bits like the bit where the cowboy's like, You're gonna see me twice more, or if you do if you make the wrong decision, you'll see me three more times. I yeah. just I don't know. I love I love David Lynch and his uh, brand of um oddness. Mm. All right then, so it's time to go uh, just one year into the future from 2001 yeah. to 2002 mm-hmm. to discuss the movie City of God. City of God. Yes. Yes. City of God. Um, a movie that I, I think from when it came out in 2002 has often been hailed as one of the best movies ever made. Mm. Um, a beloved film. Uh, nominated for various uh, Oscars. I'm not sure if it won many, but because um, my internet's not fake, <laughs> can't look stuff up at the moment. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, it came out in 2002, uh, directed by Fernando Morel, mm. um, based on a book uh, by, hang on. Da, 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 da. Oh, actually, co directed, co directed by Fernando Morel and Katia, Katia Lund. Um, and yeah, released in 2002 in Brazil, worldwide in 2003, um, adapted the novel City of God from 1987, written by Paolo Linz, um, loosely based on his life, I think, right? It's sort of loosely Mm. autobiographical, this film. Mm. Um, stars Alexandra Rodriguez, Leandro Firmino, Philippe Hargensen, Douglas Silva, Alice Braga, and Alice Braga has become... Fairly, probably, probably the most famous face in this film. I think Alice Braga. Mm. Uh, she was in the recent Suicide Suicide Squad film, and she's been in some other stuff. Um, and Sue George, who we mm. know and love from The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. Yay! 
yeah um and it is a film mm-hmm. about the city of god which is a sort of a suburb in rio de janeiro that's mm. not very nice um well not not, well. not very nice but it it has has um is is a is a is a tough place to live yeah. due yeah. to uh, factors um de- deprivation and things yeah um it's not the rio de janeiro that uh, the fast and the furious movies tell you about <laughs> for example yeah it's very different um and it uh and yeah so i've wanted to watch it for years actually i've never got round to watching it i've had it on I've even owned it on Blu-ray for a while and still mm. not watched it. So I was glad to finally be pushed into actually properly watching it. Um, and it, I didn't realize how many years it takes place over. It takes place over what, yeah. th- like 30 years mm-hmm. from, starts in the sixties and ends in the eighties. Um, yeah. so more like 20, 25 years ish, but yeah, sort of takes place from the sixties to the eighties and tells us tale of a variety of characters. Um, mm-hmm. Your main character is Rocket, who's who wants to be a photographer, yeah. uh, played by Alexandra Rodriguez, and then sort of more isn't cl- isn't clear. Sort of is is I think the real main character of the movie in a way, but doesn't become clear that he's the main character until further on is um, Lil Dice or Lil Z, as he as he yeah. refashions himself as he grows up. Yeah, um, yeah. a truly awful person. <laughs> yeah. Played yeah. by Leandro Firmino. Um and the movie sort of charts the rise of this character Lil Z from a yeah. child into a power hungry um crime boss mm-hmm. in this city of God suburb, uh, through the eyes of Rocket, who's our sort of narrator character who kind of walks us through the story. Um and it brings in a load of other characters. You've got Benny, who's um Z's partner and a much nicer person. Um mm. Wants to lead an honest life with uh, Alice Braga eventually. Um, who else have we got in there? Knockout Ned, played by Sue George. Um, and and I, I think I'm pronouncing his his name wrong there, and I do apologise. Um, who's uh, we first meet him on a bus, uh, taking mm-hmm. money on the bus, uh, and I guess it's again it's another look at how like in this in this area of the world in this place that people live. Um, if you are trying to live legitimately, it becomes very difficult and people increasingly get drawn into um, dangerous worlds that, mm. they, that they might not initially want to. And Knockout Ned is a really good example of somebody who really doesn't want to get involved in, in the world of crime. But yeah. because of his status as a veteran, he has the skills that they need and he ends up being drawn into it anyway. And it you know, it's, ends quite tragically for him. Yeah. Um, and a kind of a few other people, but no one else. Yeah, Angelica, played by uh, Alice Braga, who starts off as uh, Rocket's love interest and later becomes Benny's, um, uh, before he is sadly killed. Uh, yeah, it's Benny. Benny. Yeah. Oh, Lil Z's. Lil Z's Benny. partner, right? Yeah, it's Benny. So when, he, um, when he gets killed, I'm like, I don't know. It's just when the film changes for me. Yeah, definitely, and it's such a good scene. Oh, it's, yeah. The scene at the um, well, so the the way the movie the movie is shot in a really amazing way. He shot it on sixty millimeter film mm. stock, and it looks grainy and lived in. Like the the movie feels lived in. It feels like you're you're there with those characters because of the way they filmed it. The editing is really frenetic and frantic, and it, again, it kind of really adds to the feeling of this place. Like it mm. feels like a place where everything can change in a second. Yeah. And the way the movie is edited really kind of builds on that. Yeah. Um, the scene at the party is when Benny's decided he's going to leave the life. He's going to move away with Alice Braga. Um, and they're going to kind of, you know, start a farm together and just, you know, live yeah. hippie lives basically. And um, they throw this huge going away party for him. And it's got these strobe lights and it's on, mm. it's just, psh, 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 and you can't really tell what's going on. And it all becomes sort of chaos. And this character, I can't remember who's the character that ends up killing him, but it's somebody who wants to kill Lil Z, yeah. tries to kill Lil Z and accidentally kill um, kills Benny instead. Yeah. And yeah, the film sort of hinges on that because it makes Lil Z even more isolated and go even yeah. kind of crazier. And it all just kind of uh, builds yeah. on that. But yeah, like... Um, 
I think the reason the movie works is because the character that we stick with throughout the movie, Rocket, isn't a villain, isn't a bad guy. Mm. He just lives in this world. Like we we open by learning about the what are they called the something trio, the oh. the tender trio. Mm. Um, we see one of their early heists in which Little Z, who at that point is known as Little Dice, um, is just their basically their lookout, basically. Yeah. Uh, as like a little a young boy, and that heist goes really badly wrong for them. We later find out because of Little Dice, um, and it kind of ends up taking the lives of those three. And Rocket is the younger brother of one of the one of those three thieves. Um, mm. And I think probably because of seeing how it affected his brother, he doesn't go down that life of crime. He goes down the life of wanting to be a photographer and ends up being able to take pictures in this city of God suburb that no one else is able to take. He ends up taking pictures of the crime bosses and things. And that's kind of how he gets, gets earns his place in the world um, as a photographer, which is what he wants. And he's a really sweet character and he's really nice and mm. really enjoy him and like him and want him to succeed over the course of the movie. Um, and, um, and I like how he wants to live in this other world. He wants to be a photographer. He wants to work with the paper but he still ultimately is from that suburb. And there's like this one scene where he's taken some photos of the of Lil Z. He asks the paper uh, photograph room to develop the fo- film for him. And then the, they end up taking those photos and using them on the front page of the paper. Mm. And he's like, well, I'm going to die now. They're going to kill me because I, you know, <laughs> and he goes in and just um, his demeanor completely changes. He starts screaming and yelling at people uh, in the, in the newspaper office. Yeah. Um, but, and you kind of are reminded that he is from a different world, uh, mm. but he does kind of work his way out and stuff. Yeah, uh, I really, really liked it. I really enjoyed it. It's a, it is a brilliant movie. It's me- like the filmmaking is is incredible. The acting is incredible. The story is really good. Um, there is no negative side to it. Really, it's it's an amazing movie. I liked it a lot. Yeah. And um, I agree. Yeah, it's sad. It's upsetting. But I really love the early scenes, like the when oh, you yeah. like when you first meet Lil Dice as a kid. Yeah, he's with those three three the tender trios. They're planning yeah. this heist, and he ends up he comes up with the idea really. Yeah, and he points a gun at one of them, and they're like, "Don't do that! What are you doing, yeah. <laughs> You're a kid?" Um, and you can tell that he's sort of unsettling. Mm. And uh, they do this heist, and he's like, "Them they make him be the lookout, and they say shoot that window if we need to run." Yeah. Um, and they're in the middle of the heist and they hear the window smash and the mm. shot. It's like, Oh, we've got to go. And they run off. But then little dice has vanished and there's not really, they, they don't, they think that loads of police are going to be there and there's no police there and little dice has vanished and it's a bit odd, but they kind of run away and escape. And then the police turn up. And I was like, did he, did he do that? So he could, and then everyone in the, and then it turns out later, everyone in the in the bank or whatever, the, the, the brothel they were robbing is dead. And you didn't see the tender trio kill them. And I was like, did Lil Dice do that? I think Lil Dice did that. And later there's a flashback that shows this boy just murdering these people because he wants to. And he's like, yep. I don't know, 10 years old. Yep. And it's so unsettling and disturbing and un- unflinching. And it's, you know, there is a real problem in eyes of the world with child soldiers and child killing yeah. and what it does to a person to be made to do things like that as a young, yeah. as a really young person. Um, and the movie really kind of portrays that in a really unflinching and real mm. way. And it's yeah. sad and upsetting and, 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 and horrifying. Um, yeah. A, a really, really, really masterfully sort of put together piece of work. Yeah. It's cool. I'm glad you liked it. Good, I'm glad I liked it as well. <laughs> so we were two bads and two goods. Next. <laughs> Next. Two bads and two goods. What, what, wait, yeah. hang on. So you said that was bad, heat was bad, Mohan Drive yeah. was good, so you've got yeah. was good. Okay. Yeah. Let's go into Summer Wars then. Summer Skipping Wars. from 2002 all the way through to 2009. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um... 2009 anime movie uh, directed by Mamoru Hosoda, who's made, um, has he made Wolf Children? Yeah, Wolf Children, Belle, Boy and the Beast. Have you seen Boy and the Beast? Nope. Oh, it's so good. Uh, Mirai, uh, the girl who leaped, who leapt through time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've seen the girl who leapt through time before. Yeah. Didn't love it. Sort Not of. his best. Mm. 
No. After so Mirai and the girl who leapt through time are okay, but I think his best are yeah. the boy and the beast, Wolf Children, some Wars and Bell. Okay. So his other movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, Summer Wars 2009, directed by this Mamoru Hosoda. Sort of a redo of a section of the Digimon movie that he did um, about an AI, yeah, rogue AI taking control in the internet and um, people having to fight against it, basically, mm. to save uh, nuclear weapons from being uh, fired at the Earth. Yes. Um, it all takes place in this family's... Farm, not farm, no. like like kind of country estate uh, in Japan um, to celebrate the matriarch of the family ninetieth uh, birthday. Great, the the one of the main characters is Natsuki, um, and it's her grandmother's great grandmother's ninetieth birthday, and she brings along with her this character Kenji, who is uh, an eleventh grade math genius who she wants him to pretend to be her boyfriend for reasons that I don't entirely remember. She just needs to, she wants to, I, I don't know. She takes oh, it with her anyway. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's kind of nervous and shy and he meets this extended family of uh, lunatics, basically, who um, kind of welcome into the family, but also don't welcome into the family. Um, and he ends up being implicated in the release of this artificial intelligence called Love Machine. <laughs> yes, I'm assuming good. after the girls allowed so. And um, he has to, or the family have to work together to stop the love machine AI from destroying mm. the world. Um, and it's all been done through this virtual world, which is called Oz. Uh, Oz is like, it's basically like this um, prediction of what social media might become in the future of everybody sharing this virtual space. Mm. Now it's called the metaverse actually, but which isn't mm. still isn't really realized, but yeah sort of version of what is what is now called the metaverse is, is Oz. Um, and he is faced with sort of defeating it. Then another guy turns up at the family home who's like the black sheep of the family. And it turns out that he made Love Machine, which seems quite... Um, <laughs> quite well, the coincidence. Well, you know. <laughs> uh, that he made it. And also they're going to... Like the guy who's trying to defeat it is there as well. Um, I, I, so this is a, it's a weird movie. I didn't dislike it, mm. but I didn't fall in love with it. I, I think the, the parts of the story that most interest me are beat for beat the same as the Digimon movie, which I have like a nostalgic appreciation and love mm. for that, that kind of made this feel a bit like a repeat of that, but less mm. impactful on me. And then the other side of it is the sort of family drama side, which I found odd, <laughs> hard to connect to. Okay. Um, and it, it ended up coming together as like a weird stew of a thing that I didn't fully grasp, but I still had a pretty good time with it. It's pretty well made. It looks nice. The animation's good and it looks really different when they're in Oz and I really like the way Oz looks and the way all of mm. that is designed is really good. Yeah. But I, I just felt like like one of the one of the members of this family, his his avatar in the world of Oz is this rabbit that's really good at fighting, right? Mm. Mm. Yeah. I, I never I don't know if I missed something, but I never kind of noted it, it didn't seem like it was set up that he was that rabbit, really. And also it just it just felt very weird that in this world where supposedly everyone is using Oz there's like three of the most important people to it happen to be at this one house in, in the middle of Japan. Very intelligent people in that house in the middle of Japan. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess they are. Inventive. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but if you kind of take that and you go with it, it does all, it is all entertaining and fun to look at. It's pretty funny. Uh, the way the family sort of, you know, she introduces this guy as her boyfriend and obviously he's not really her boyfriend, but the yeah. family sort of, start to judge him and, and, and work out whether he's worth uh, her time. <laughs> and um, he starts to fall for her. She starts to fall for him. It's this kind of, you know, quite standard but nice little love story. Um, and, yeah, 
I don't know. I don't know that I have lots and lots to say about Summer Wars beyond I thought it was okay. I just think it's so beautiful to watch. I love his animation style and I liked what you said. And he's done it again in Bell where he's created like a, a different reality. And maybe because yeah. I, I wasn't so... Uh, like I the digi like I wasn't so into Digimon for me that was like yeah I like that how he did it and um, yeah if you if you watch Bell he does the same and I think even better that like creating a different reality with different um, avatars and um, um, making you care about about the people in 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 the in the in the yeah in the film I don't know I just I love his films and I I. I really. Like I'd have it. liked more time in the in the world of Oz, and I'd have liked to have learned more about how that worked and how mm. Oz worked. Yeah. Um, and I think that, like, if you think about, say, Ghibli, and then you think about the guy that made Your Name and his movies. Yeah. I don't like the animation style and look of this movie. Ah, uh, okay. As much as I like those, I I think it's mm. fine. Mm. But I think it looks a little bit. And it's part of the style and the choice and the, and stuff, but it looks a little bit yeah. sort of unfinished. Not unfinished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, but that's, there's not that's, enough detail to it. Yeah, that's why I like it because it's just so like, I don't know. It's, it's yeah. just a style that I like. Is uh, when I watch anime, I tend to go for animes that look like this rather than um, too perfect. Yeah, which is totally fair. like it's um, just totally a choice of what you like, you know. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But it's interesting because I've wanted like Summer Wars again. I remember when it came out in 2009, I remember reading a review. It might have been on IGN.com or somewhere like that that gave it some perfect score, like 10 out of 10 or something. I've wanted to watch it yeah. for years. Mm. So again, I'm glad I finally sat down and watched yeah. it. And I liked it and I would watch it again. Mm. But if I think about the animes that I, the anime films that I love, like yeah. um, Your Name or Acura mm. or some of the Ghibli ones, it doesn't quite sit alongside those for me. Probably liked it more than The Girl Who Leapt Through Time, which I really didn't connect no, with in the end but um no. but um remember they was made 13 years ago 14 years ago and a lot has changed mm -hmm. in everything so i think i think you would have enjoyed it more if you watched it when it came out because in yeah in, maybe in 14 years a lot has changed and so maybe i think if you watch bell which is not very long um his latest movie i think you might like it more because that yeah, true. And we also, about... we've had a lot of stories recently about, like, virtual worlds. Yeah, yeah. And, like, the bell is about kind of um, uh, social media. Yeah. And, and uh, like, a new type of social media that you can be whoever you want. And it's quite, it's quite cool. Yeah. Mm. Love yeah, that one. I should watch Bell. I, yeah, yes. I, I'll watch Bell. And, again, Summer Wars, it was good. But I kind of wanted to love it and I didn't fully love it. But I yeah. don't have anything bad to say about it, really. Good. And people should check it out. Yeah, definitely. People should check it out. A hundred. Jakub Santo. <laughs> right. Should we move on? Yes. What's film? What film is next? We're going to jump five years ahead to 2014 and we're going to talk about A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night. <laughs> Why do you keep making me watch films that I like talking about them is so hard? Like, okay, so I'm going to try, <laughs> you know, uh, then the well, next it's one. only an Iranian cowboy vampire Western movie. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. What is the plot? Let's see. Uh, you know, with an 80s music school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's set in, an, in, in the Iranian ghost town of Bad City. And this mm -hmm. place is, uh, well, it's already black and white so it's quite dark and um it seems to be a place where people um suffer from addiction it might be quite a poor place there's a there's a one drug dealer that uh, kind of rules the town and abuses uh people and steals money and steals cars and um and in all this horribleness there's one character um Arash who seems to not be part of this bad place, uh, but kind of maybe wants to get out and be better than the place. Um, mm. uh, and in this town, there is, um, there is a, there is a, there is the girl that lives in the ta this town who uh, seems to not like 
<laughs> men who deal drugs <laughs> to people mm. and um she is amazing um <laughs> she turns out to be a vampire mm-hmm. who skates uh yeah yeah skateboarding vampire a skateboarding vampire uh, so this film, like I said before, is in black and white. Um, it's there are only like five characters in the film. There's the girl. There's Arash. Yeah, pretty much. There's Arash's dad. There's uh the Ati, the sex worker. There is um Sahid, who is the drug dealer pimp, and then there is Shah Shahida, who is the girl that Harash works for. Um. Uh. Yeah. So, <laughs> what to say about this film? Very interesting <laughs> to watch. Uh. Very. Uh. Not much is said. I think. I think. Uh, um, I think is more about the mood and about the black and white. It's such a dark black and white. Uh. Thing. Yeah. And, mainly and I think that's where the description of it as a western tends to come from. Yeah, that's why I was wondering why is a western because I can understand it's a vampire vampire film, but a western is it because Harash is is dressed like um you know a young James Dean and has got the cool car, or is it because it's black and white, or is be- I don't know. Um, I think it's to do very- with the fact it's like it's as if it's set in one of these sort of bordered small bordered ghost towns that you get yeah. in western movies, and it's sort of in the middle of this expanse of nothingness. Almost, yeah. and it's quite the pacing of it, and the and the the yeah, it's less to do with the story, and it's more to do with the pacing and the style yeah. and the theme of it. Okay, um, there is only one scene of what I record, no, a couple of scenes of what I record that are set during the day, which is the first scene where Harash gets a cat, and then when mm. Harash finds his dad on the streets, um, and uh, it's it's a it's kind of a. There's no much. There's not much happiness in this film. It's very like dull and sad, and everybody kind of kind of suffering. And um, but Harash finds the girl, and they seem to be able to fall in love. And that's really lovely when they're in their flat apartment, in her apartment, and they listen to music, and it's kind of nice. She doesn't seem scary anymore. Um, uh, what else to say? So it's. It wasn't supposed to be a feminist movie. Uh, the director, Anna Lili Amirpour, said that. It wasn't supposed to be a feminist movie, but it kind of became a feminist movie because, you know, the girl is vengeful against men that are treating women bad, badly. Uh, mm. Which I, 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 I'll, I'll go with that because, you know, she's wonderful. She's strong. She's a vampire. Um, her eyes are mesmerizing. You know, when, when she kills and um, sucks all of... Um, Saheed's blood I was like yeah wonderful um because you're not really sure who she is until until she gets in the flat and everything is very quiet and Saheed is taking drugs and and then (laughs) she just puts his finger in his mouth and she bites it off (laughs) (laughs) and that's it um but yeah there's not not you don't apart from the the character of the girl and Harash you don't really like anyone uh, everybody's a bit lost in their in their blackness, um, True. but yeah, I I I liked it a lot in in its simple weirdness. I thought it was wonderful, and um, it's amazing how somebody with a camera and five characters can create this story with very little dialogue, but make it so kind of powerful and uh, interesting and engaging. Um, and you feel for Harash and you feel for the girl. She doesn't really say anything. Well, she doesn't say anything, does she? I don't know if she does, no. Yeah, but her, her performance is so great that you you know, there's a kind of sadness and vengefulness in, in her. And, um, it's mainly about addiction, which is interesting because, there are different. It shows different sides of addiction without being too blatant. So, I read. Uh, I didn't realize there's a scene where there's a boy on the street, and he's opens a, a sweet a a a candy wrapper, mm. and uh, the the camera goes on this candy wrapper, and then the girl arrives, and she says, 
you know, uh, uh, you have to promise me you're going to be a good boy. And that's kind of like where addiction starts, like from sugar. And that's kind of like a, a, what kids are addicted to, sugar. And then there's mm. um, uh, Hussein, which is Harash's dad. He's addicted to heroin. And um, Saheed is a cocaine, uh, is like he's, he is addicted to cocaine. And then Harash, who's not addicted to anything, he then becomes addicted to, and then um, the girl is addicted to blood. And then Arash becomes yeah. addicted to her because there existed an addiction to blood. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 in such a also it's not a very long film. It's uh how long is it? 101 minutes. Yeah, it's like an hour and forty minutes of like compared of, to the others. Compared to <laughs> all the rest. Um and I, I I really I really liked it. I thought it was really well made. The the soundtrack is incredible. And um and the fact that uh, the Harash's dad, Hussein, he's uh, in how he's the is the taxi driver in How I Met Your Mother. I was just like, I've never seen him anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Oh my god, it's you! And I and he's totally he's like a drug addict. I'm like, What? It's just a totally different character. And uh, but I really enjoyed it, and uh, I love Sheila Vand, who plays the girl with no words. She managed to kind of like get through to you everything all the feelings and uh mm. it's wonderful it's a really really good film yeah i'm glad you liked it yeah i've i've only watched it once i watched it the once and i've not watched it again because it was such a perfect experience mm. but i do need to watch it another time because it might be one of my favorite films it's it's I- it's it, yeah it's incredible and it's a pit uh, she's made a couple more films since and i've watched one of them and it didn't live up to a girl walks home alone at night, but she's a definitely a filmmaker that I want to um, yeah support because yeah that that movie is amazing. I'm sure she has more amazing movies in her. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, apparently she's directing a a female led reboot of the 1993 Sylvester Stallone movie Cliffhanger. So that'll be something. <laughs> it might go down very well with people. And Jason Momoa is going to be in it. Presumably not as one of the females leading it, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm up for that. Same. All right. I'm glad you like to go walk home alone at night. What about Bait from 2019? Bait. Another film in black and white. Uh, filmed in a completely uh, different type of camera, <laughs> which is uh, it's called a... Uh, I can think about boombox, but it's not boombox. Um, <laughs> on a different camera. Well, like, I don't know that they're clockwork. They're clockwork cameras. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not filmed on digital. It's filmed on um, actual on film. Film. And the director is, developed all the film in his own lab. Incredible! Like the the just so I think you I think. Even if you don't like the film, I think you need to appreciate the work that has gone behind it and the masterfulness of um, Mark Jenkins making Mark a film. Ma- Mark Jenkins yeah, making a film like this without, in this day and age, like it's yeah. just such a good thing. Because those work. cameras can't, can't pick up sound they either. So sound. every single thing you hear in the yeah. movie has been added in post by him. Yeah. Yeah, which is insane. So, whatever you, if if uh, if you want to watch the, if somebody that's listening wants to, if if you if the listeners at home want to watch the film, just think about the masterfulness of what be, went behind this film, and then watch the film. Um, so mm. it's about um, Martin is a fisherman. Mar is a fisherman without a boat. Um, <laughs> we find out he hasn't got a boat quite uh, later on. Um, a little bit later on in the film and because you also find out because his um, brother has decided to uh, use the boat that they used to use fishing as um, a boat for tourists you know stag do's hen parties mm-hmm. um, and their childhood home has now become an airbnb for where and this posh family from london <sighs> God, this posh family from London uh, <laughs> run it. Um, and uh, they kind of are making the rules in the in the fisherman's town. 
And so Martin can't, not, for example, can't park where he used to park to go fishing. And uh, they are, you know, um, they, they have certain rules for the community. Oh, my God, the community. That scene. Um, yeah. And so he he is trying to make money as he can and by fishing with nets. Um, and but uh, with difficulties because not having a boat um, is difficult. And so it's just basically the tale of this village. Uh, what has happened to this village in Cornwall, I guess? Yes, a Cornish village. Yeah. Yeah, what has happened in this Cornish village um, due to some form of gentrification that is happening through Airbnbs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I had to get used to the film because there were some points where there were like flash forwards and flashbacks and I thought, have I missed something? So there's a scene where the family yeah, from London arrives. Yeah, it's the chrono- chronology is, yeah. Yeah, it's insane. And so there's a family from London arrives and uh, he, then there's a, there's the, the dad says bye to the daughter and then suddenly he's on the floor. And I'm like, have I missed something? I, I rewinded it, well, <laughs> went back twice. I was like, have I missed something? And then you realise that the film kind of goes, has flashbacks and flash forwards, which are fascinating because there are things that happen like at the beginning that then happen and maybe like 10 minutes later. And... Um, and that's really... And there are some repeated shots that are repeated over and over. Yeah. Like there's a shot of glass smashing on the floor yeah, that you see yeah. constantly throughout the movie and it's not yeah. until the end you get context of what that is. Yeah. Um, you absolutely despise the London family apart from the girl, the daughter. The daughter seems really nice. Um, mm-hmm. and, and interesting fact about the daughter is she is in real life a musician uh, called Georgia Ellery who is a member of the band Black Country New Road. Who are oh, is she? Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, the the London family is like real, really disrespectful at the beginning, kind of like, you know, towing his truck and kind of telling him what to do and changing the, the apartment, the, what the house they live in. Um, but there's a, there's a scene where Martin and uh, the London guy are at a, a headstand, like at the pub fighting and then he calls him like, you know, he's uh, <laughs> a like they just, or something. They, yeah, and you just, just argue. And Edward Rowe, who plays Martin, is, I don't know, just wonderful. Just just like, because he's very kind of like, that's, that's his feelings. That's how he is. The sea and the moodiness, that's what he is. There's nothing else. There's no joy. There's no happiness. There's nothing. And I really liked how he portrayed that. Um, mm. And, uh, but the development, the characters kind of develop a little bit like the wife of the London guy kind of becomes a little bit more uh, understanding maybe of the situation or she feels guilty. And there's a scene where yeah. some um, like a, a couple has rented, a little family has rented um, the, uh, uh, the Airbnb in front of the docks and uh, it's seven o'clock in the morning and they're trying to get to, um, they're going, trying to go fishing and this guy with like the cr- the stupidest boxer shorts, like those really tight <laughs> boxer shorts comes out and he's like, it's seven o'clock, it's illegal to do this. And just like, they're just fishermen getting, you know, trying to go and fish. And it's just such a, and you feel so angry against that, this twerp with this tiny boxer short, just go away, you know? And, um... I I I I I appreciated the film. I thought I think I I I can't say I like. It's a good film. I I I Mark Jenkin did a great thing with what he had, and I think he does portray in a real incredible sense how you know things are moving on, but not everybody is prepared to move on that way, and the people that. Mm want to live the rural life but you're not prepared to to deal with the rural um you're not prepared to take the rough with the smooth yeah exactly and i think that's kind of it's resounded like i think that's a kind of what it's trying to show like people are trying to make money out of something but also not knowing that they're taking something away from the people of the place because in winter the pub is closed Mm. um 
and the rules are not the same. So winners, uh, winner, winner stays on is not the same. So one of the characters, the girl that works in a pub, who she's <laughs> she's pretty feisty. She yeah, she is. She gets arrested, and uh, so yeah, I I I liked it. It's an interesting f- film to watch. I think I I am I'm, I'm, well. I'm happy I watched it because it's just so. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely in it. I think I've watched it three times now, and you get a little bit more out of each time because you pick up more and more on those out of context mm. sort of back and forward flashback shots that, yeah. that he peppers in the movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the first time you watch it, it can be a bit of an almost overwhelming experience as you're trying yeah. to piece together. Because also the they have like proper Cornish shown. accent, and the lady that lives next to him. Yeah. Like, Proper job, like I haven't heard Proper that for job. so Proper job, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? Um, and um, and there's a the cyclicity of it. Like the beginning shot is like the end shot, so it's kind of like you could just, mm. you know, cyclical. Watch it like. it's cyclical. Uh, yeah, interesting film, George. I'm glad you were able to watch it and see, you know, yeah, uh, why yeah. I like it. I just, and, I just um, love the way it's. I just, I, yeah, like you were saying, the way it's filmed, the way it's made, every, the the artistry that's gone into producing yeah. it is so. Like you look at the Wikipedia page and it's like written by Mark Jenkins, cinematography by Mark Jenkins, directed by yeah. Mark Jenkins, edited by Mark Jenkins. Like yeah. it is one man's full creative vision. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and his second film, Ennis Main, is even more. Mm. His his. It's it's very odd movie, but I really enjoyed it. And stars Mary Woodvine, the um the wife in the London couple, is is pretty much the only actor on screen for that one. Okay. Yeah, cool. good film. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Ah, he's he is from Cornwall. Maybe maybe yeah. this is kind of like something that he experienced. Presumably, or something he's he's yeah witnessed. Yeah, you know who I hated, the son. Who. The son of the London couple. Oh, with his like little. Oh, with his. Oh, I hated it. <laughs> hated it's it. It's really unlikable. It's horrible. Steals the lobster. Oh my god! He steals the lo- when he stole the lobster. I I felt that's a weird. The thing is such a simple film, a bit like a, a girl walks home alone at night, but I felt really taken by by what was happening, and the same with this. It's just mm. kind of. He takes a lobster and then he just goes in and he's like, he's going to stab him. He goes in the pub and you think that Martin is going to stab him. But no, he oh, makes yeah. him He makes him uh, fix the lobster net. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> and then you said you said that the, the daughter seems more likeable, but I feel like part of the message of what happens at the end is that she's gone to that town. She's sort of started, you know, a, a kind of holiday relationship with this, yeah. with the son of the, the tourist boat operator, man. Yeah. Um, but then it feels like the comment the movie's making is when the tragic event happens, when that guy dies, yeah, and she's sort of there, partly responsible, yeah. They probably just don't suffer any consequences at all for that, no. Um, and she's yeah. able to just come in, cut, wreak some havoc, and and leave. I, I don't yeah. know. I feel like they're all fairly in their own ways, um, yeah, maybe unlikable. Oh, and then yeah. you know, it, you can find the, the you can find Martin quite unlikable in his refusal to. You know, he has sold that house to them. They are free to do what they want with it. And it does come with a private road, which now also belongs to them. It's no longer his road. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard, you know, it's hard to know, you know, you can see why he's so upset about it and why he isn't happy. But equally, but I don't know, think he, brought that I think house. maybe it was more his brother wanting to sell the house more than him. True, true. But mm. he did still, it happened. Yeah. Yeah, I, but the I, thing is, if somebody, with him, the but... problem is, at one point, the wife of the London couple says, you didn't have to sell us the house. And he said, didn't I? Mm. And then I was, I thought that maybe if somebody gives you an offer that you can't refuse and you are literally needing the money, you can say, well, I'm not going to buy the ha- I'm not going to sell you the house. But if the money is good and that's what you need to save your family and whatever, and the boat, yeah. I think, I think sometimes people don't have the choice. But what and, happened to yeah. his share of that money then? Because he seems to have nothing when we meet him in the movie. Like he's putting oh. fivers in a tin to pay for a boat. 
I don't, pff, I don't know. Well, ask her. Let's ask Mark Jenkin. <laughs> right. Well, I'm glad you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, mm. The farewell. The farewell. The farewell came out about a month after bait. So yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 2019 American Chinese uh, comedy drama movie. Written and directed by Lulu Wang, starring Awkwafina, Zima, Diana Lin, Zhao Shuzhen, um, and a variety of other actors. Um, was the first A24 production to be rated PG. Mm. Interestingly. Uh, follows Billy, uh, Billy Wang, played by Awkwafina, as she uh, is child- the Daughter of uh, Chinese immigrants living in New York, um, regularly visits home, has a close relationship with her grandmother who still lives in China. Uh, movie opens with her on the phone to her grand. You can tell that they really love each other and have you know a lot of respect and adoration mm. for each other. She for then she goes home, speaks to her parents, and we see some scenes in China as well, and we learn that the grandmother is dying. She has cancer. Um, and the choice are... <laughs> The choice that the family has made, apparently a common decision made in ch- Chinese culture, yeah. is to not tell the mum, the yeah. grandmother, that she's she's dying mm-hmm. um, until the until the latest possible moment, so that she can not, you know, because th- they they think the worry will kill you rather than the, the yeah. cancer. Yeah, to live like a better life. Without, yeah, without being scared of death. Yeah, yeah, a- an interesting. An interesting setup because it immediately makes me sort of like I couldn't conceive of making that choice for someone. But this is the this is the it's their culture, yeah, yeah. Not I, th- a, I don't I, think I, it's a good thing to do. I think it's a wonderful thing to do. I think it's because because it, it's it, it, it but it, I think it's because and I think that's that's the, that's the wonderful thing about the movie because Aquafina comes from like a completely different culture where that doesn't happen and she's finding it really hard. Yeah, but then it you think happen. about it, and she's like, "But she's ter- in theory, she was terminal, yeah." And so you go, "Why ruin the last few moments of their lives when you know she's gonna she's gonna pass away anyway?" And you, I, I kind of get that you should tell people, but also like you don't want to worry them. I don't know. It's I, I, it's I, no I, one's decision other than the person who has the illness yeah yeah but it's a culture thing so like everybody knows everybody knows that that's going to happen it's not like it's a secret in the family like it's it's a it's a chinese culture thing and in and other asian countries it's not mm. yeah so it's we don't understand it because we 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 deal with the pain we do everything and we and in a way it's just kind of like i think it's so refreshing that they want to spend the last few days of the grandmother's life together and celebrating they are they see the best of her yeah i still feel like they could see the best of her if she knew about it but anyway that's the set of the movie aquafina has grown up in america so like you say doesn't understand why you would do this her parents are awful people (laughs) who forbid her from so they basically the family invents a wedding between um uh, da, 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 between Hao Hao, who is the son, who is basically Aquafina's Ak- Ak- character's cousin, yeah. the son of her dad's brother. Yeah. Um, he's been going out with a Japanese girl for what a month or something. <laughs> yeah, not very long. And yeah. they can they they get her to agree to uh, a wedding. So that the is an excuse to bring the entire family together. Yeah, uh, and this is this is an interesting thing about the movie. I think in terms of you got this Chinese family, this matriarch, um, uh, uh, Nai Nai, played by Zhao Shuzhen, who's amazing mm. in the movie. She's got two sons, right? One of the sons has gone to Japan and raised his family in Japan. And yeah. the other son has gone to America, raised his family in America. And I yeah. feel like there's a point being made there about the son that's gone off to raise his family in Japan will have had all of the cultural norms of China, or a lot of them kind of reinforced by their similarities to Japanese culture. Yeah. Um, in terms of, you know, and there's a discussion in the movie about like, 
the West's love of self over the East's love of of community and, mm. and working together. Um, and then, yeah, so Hao Hao is growing up in Japan and has this uh, this Japanese fiancé, and they are kind of much more still aligned with Chinese culture, whereas the family that went off to America has, has changed a lot, and especially mm. Billy, who grew up entirely in America pretty much, is very very american and doesn't understand yeah. some of these some of these decisions the family is making to the to the degree where her parents forbid her from coming to this wedding because they think she's going to tell the grandmother that she's dying yeah um billy so they go off to the wedding yeah. uh billy goes and follows them anyway and turns up without telling them and then there's a whole discussion it's very real about how like they're like you can't pay for this plane ticket um, and she's obviously got it on a credit card and stuff because that's how young people have to yeah. get through the world. Yeah. Um, and uh, that felt that felt very real. Um, <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so she turns up, and you know, every time, and Aquafina is very amazing in this movie because every time she looks at the grandmother, you can see on her face that the internal battle between letting them all do this thing she thinks is insane because it is insane yeah. and um letting <laughs> and 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 telling her grandmother the truth which is what she should do um and it's a very beautiful relationship mm. that you see play out between the, these two very different generations of her you know she has such a deep and an and intense love for her grandmother um and but she's so different as well. Um, and her attempts to fit in and her attempts to go along with them. Some of like her uncle is horrible to her in the movie. Um, mm. Clearly doesn't like her because she's American um, or, you yeah. know, because of her American sensibilities and they really, really kind of clash. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of, the movie just sort of plays out that various scenes le- preparing for and leading up to this wedding where she is kind of learning about her culture and where she came from, getting closer to her grandmother, deciding what to do about this, about, you know, whether or not to tell her. And um, it's, it, I really, really liked it. It's a really enjoyable, good sort of flamp family drama movie. Um, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, uh, I really enjoyed. I don't, I don't know. I don't know really. It was it was odd because I definitely would struggle with that. Yeah. Decision. But in the I would end, always want to know something like that. The grandma, the grandma doesn't die. Yeah. So. Yeah. So like she would have put a lot of suffering. Then and she didn't have to. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Um, and yeah, the, I, I like, you know, the character of Billy is really likable and relatable yeah. and she's struggling in the way that young people struggle. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, saying goodbye to a grandmother, saying goodbye to a loved one is, is a really difficult thing uh, to go through. When they drive off in the taxi, I was in floods. Mm. So she <laughs> drives off and she, she says bye to her grandmother, grandmother and it's just like, I was just... In floods of tears, because you know she, you don't know if she's going to come back there. You don't know mm. if she's going to see her again, or you know, it's not that easy to visit your parents, your family when they're so far. Mm. Mm. Agreed. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you liked it. Uh, it was very good, though. It's a very, very good film, and I am glad. I w- again, similar to um, other than Sleepless in Seattle. The other movies you asked me to watch, uh, they are movies I've been meaning to watch for a long time and been too lazy to get around to watching. So I'm glad that I did. And um, Come on, you're yeah, a bit really... glad that you watched Sleepless in Seattle. No, I'm not. Seeing um, an unhinged version of Meg Ryan. Yeah, no. But The Farewell is very good and I, I really like Aquafina. She is so good. Everything yeah. I've seen her in, I've really enjoyed her in. I think she's she's fantastic. So. Looking forward to more from her in the future. What have we got coming up from her soon? Renfield. She's in Renfield. Yeah. Which is out in like a week or so. So, yeah. Exciting times. Um, But that brings us to the end. I'll tell you what we should do quickly. We should rank the four movies we watched. Okay. Do you want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. Down at number four, Sleepless in Seattle. Easy choice. Yeah. Um, In at number three, um, Summer Wars. 
Number yep. two, I'll go with the farewell. And number one, mm. City of God. Um, I'm going to go for number four, Heat. Number three, Bait. Number two, Mulholland Drive. And number one, A Girl That Walks Home Alone at Night. An interesting order. I can respect it. Yeah. Well done. Um, so, yeah, that, <laughs> that, that brings us to the end. No recommendations for this week, really, beyond, I guess, watch the Mario movie and check out the first episode of Beef. Watch all the films that we said. Yeah, and watch all, all of movies, every single one of them. Well, they're all, they're all <laughs> notable. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you want to do, uh, before we go, do you want to do a little MyTube since I haven't watched the new... Yes. The, I haven't watched the trailer for the upcoming... Well, it's not upcoming, it's in June, so quite a, a time away. July. July, even further. Uh, Barbie. Mm. Yeah, so I haven't watched it. I was waiting for George. Have you watched it, George? I have watched it, so I mean, but I'm very intrigued to know what you think of it. Uh, is it um, this one, Barbie trailer two? Uh, I'd wa- I'd put the one above it on. This one teaser. Yep. Yep. Very pink. Oh, her foot! Oh, weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, so, oh, Ryan Gosling is Ken. Oh, that's all. Hi, Ken. Ah, so they're all Barbies and Kens. Yep. Good okay. song. Yeah. I thought I might stay over tonight. Yeah. Why? To do what? To do what? I'm actually not sure. Oh, <laughs> that's game. really lovely. Okay. So is that plastic Very bright world. and colourful. Very, Very bright pink. and colourful. Yes. But it's full of people we know. Like, full. Yeah, it's got <gasps> a crazy cast. The, the cast is insane. America Ferreira as well. Kate McKinnon. Wow. Mm. Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa? What are you doing here? Mm. I'm coming with you. Did you bring your rollerblades? I literally <laughs> don't know where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those rollerblades. Wow. Oh, looks like this beach is a little too much beach for you, Ken. If I wasn't severely injured, I would beat you off right now, Ken. I'll beat off with you any day, Ken. <laughs> Anyone who wants to beat him off has to beat me off. Oh my god! Both of you off at the same What's his time. name? <laughs> Michael Sarah. Michael Sarah. Wow. So it's based on by my written by oh Greta Gerwig and her husband Noah Baumbach, directed by Greta Gerwig. Yes. Okay. Are they married or are they just partners? I'm not. Well, totally partners. Sure on that oh, one. sorry, but her partner. Wow, it looks <clears throat> cool. I think um, I would like to watch it. I hope it's good because I, I know really when something has got too many people, and you know, but yeah, but I mean Greta Gerwig. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I trust Greta Gerwig. She's made some pretty good movies in the past. Yeah, yeah, she has. Um, and, you know, Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, the rest of the supporting cast, pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. I'm nervous because it looks like it's a, some toys come into the real world film and that is really usually not great. So Yeah, yeah. But That's- I have faith in this cast and this creative team, so I hope it's going to be good. And that joke at the end about... Um, beaches is funny. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah. More on Barbie later. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so that brings us to an end of episode 99. Please excuse the delay in normal service next week as we take a break uh, for a week, but we'll be back with a brun, uh, a huge, spectacular episode 100 for you um, Yeah, in a couple of weeks, and we hope you enjoy that. When it arrives. In the meantime, please rate and review us and watch all those movies we've talked about today. They're all worth your time in some way or another. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Love you so much. Love Bye. you. Bye. Bye.